dear friends, what a wonderful evening it is with Avital Miller from Denver, Colorado with us tonight on Deep Talks. What a wonderful guest we have. And let's have an introduction from Srishti, who is looking stunning tonight. And I'm so sure that the ones who will be joining us on this conversation tonight will feel enlightened and there will be a healing process because this is something special that we are holding tonight. And you will come to know while we converse and you will come to know even more that dancing also is a healing therapy in itself. So let's have Srishti introducing Avtul Miller from Denver, Colorado. Welcome, Srishti, and welcome, Avtul. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, and welcome, everyone. It is my honor to introduce to you our guest for tonight, Miss Avital Miller. Avital Miller, best selling and four-time award-winning author of the books Healing Happens and Practice inspires people to experience boundless energy, absolute happiness, and true success. Years, Avital has been serving thousands of people worldwide as an award-winning international keynote speaker, healing breakthrough facilitator, and global dancer. Her leadership background includes being a program manager at Microsoft, lead coach for Success Resources America, sales and marketing director for Crystal Clarity Publishers, yoga and fitness teacher trainer, and fitness director. Stages and shows where she has danced, sung, or spoken include the Kennedy Center, KTLA, Channel 7 News, KPCW, KCMJ, Miss South India Pageant, Global Workplace Wellness Summit, and Motivational Millennial. Her articles have been published in Toastmasters International Magazine, Fitness Professional Online, 30 Seconds, and Sacred Dance Guild Journal. She won the Exceptional Woman of Excellence Award from the Women and her Keep Happens won four awards, including one from Top Chef. Well, anyways, I think Srishti did her best and that was a technical glitch. My dear viewers, it is wonderful to even face such kind of challenges when you're hosting and you're introducing somebody. But there is always a saying that while we are on with the challenges in life, we should always feel bright enough and illuminate ourselves. And there is Srishti joining us again, starting from where she left. So yes, Srishti, you can carry forward. So maybe, maybe there is a network issue and she's unable to process the same. We will carry forward our conversations with Avital Miller. This is something which is going to be a healing in itself, my dear viewers, and you'll be lucky enough to take some tips from Avital. So welcome, Avital. It is indeed an honor for me to have you on board Deep Talks. It's a virtual reality on love and life. We all talk about experiences of life and how we deal with them. It is an honor for me to have you here. How are you feeling and how is Denver treating you tonight? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, it's early in the day in Denver and it's a beautiful, sunny day. Um, this is a really, really fun city to be in, especially as the world here is opening up. Uh, you know, it's we maintain like just what we're doing here virtually, like keeping connected and keeping all of our lives going in the best way possible. And that's one of the most important things that we could do for our life and livelihood. Yeah, that's so wonderful. So Srishti, once again, where you left, you can just restart from there if you would love to add to the introductory part of Abitul Miller. Should I start from the beginning? No, you can start from where you left, Srishti, so that we are up with Avital Miller with the conversation. Yes. She won the Exceptional Woman of Excellence Award from the Women Economic Forum, and her book, Healing Happens, won four awards, including one from Top Shelf. Avital has been trained as a neuro-linguistic practitioner and an energy healer in chronic healing and another level two. She has performed and taught dance internationally since 1993. A graduate of Washington University 
Place, Missouri, with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering and a major in Dance, she is known for offering beyond cutting-edge wisdom with authenticity, delightful energy, and infectious joy. She enables you to have more willpower in your life, convert toxic energy to supportive energy, and nourish the relationship between your soul and body. She is going to enhance the power to heal yourself through natural healing techniques and awareness in order to comfortably, energetically, and joyfully live your passions. Fatal pronouncements do not have to be your fate. You can contact her through email at info at the rate avitalmiller.com. At this juncture, I would feel honored to introduce you with Dr. Colleen Coker, a noble soul and a renowned psychologist. She has conducted so far 65 interviews with mm -hmm. celebrated dignitaries prominent in their respective fields from all across the globe for the recognition of their innovative ideas and works for the well-being of the society. Dr. Coker is also a well-known counselor. Anyone who knows her, including me, remain eager to see her guidance and blessings for a life free of sins and worries. Today, she has chosen Ms. Avital Miller to share her wonderful experiences and achievements in the 66th episode of Deep Talks. I invite all of you to enjoy this terrific and inspiring conversation with her. I am sure that you will all relish this beautiful talk and will also participate in it by commenting, liking, and sharing it with your loved ones. With this, I leave the virtual stage of communication open to ma'am and public for leading the way up. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot, Sushi, for, for a wonderful introduction. That is okay, that is not in our hands. Thanks a lot. And once again, Avital Miller, it is an honor for us to have you on board Deep Talks, mm -hmm. virtual reality on love and life. So apart from whatever I need to ask you, mm -hmm. how did dancing happen to you? Was it something that entrusted you during your childhood days? Or was it something that guided you towards an enlightenment which you had as a child or as mm -hmm. an adult? Yeah, I I know sometimes people want, want to associate dance with enlightenment and and enlightenment lives by itself and it, it like lives with anything that you do. You know, so I wanted to state that it's, everything is more about how you do it, I feel. Uh, I grew up, I was put into gymnastics before age five. And my favorite part of gymnastics was the floor where there was a little bit of dance. And I got invited into a dance class. Um, at, I was going to the JCC, the Jewish Community Center after school. As they knew I did gymnastics, they saw me there and they invited me. I didn't have to audition into my first official dance class. That was just a dance class. And it just felt like such an honor and, and so fun. And by the time you hit 13, you need to decide, like, how much gymnastics are you doing? My mother wasn't willing to put me into competitive training. So it was getting too easy. Wow. Um, and... We found a dance studio a mile from my house and I begged my mother, I said, can I just dance? And it's so close, it's so easy for you. And I'll just ride my bike. You don't even have to drive me. You just sign the paper Jeez. right for it. So I dove fully, fully into dance at that point. Um, I did major in dance. I know a lot of times people ask me like, can you teach me a dance class? I'm like, well, I, I don't really teach technical dance classes anymore. So yeah. I did used to, but it, it I think there's plenty of people out there who could teach technical dance classes and mm -hmm. fascinate and teach wonderful ones. So, what, and I still take technical dance classes, but what fascinates me is it's combining that with understanding yourself. So I did take some dance sure. movement therapy in college as well. And then I did create practices that tie in spirituality to movement. And the latest thing I've been doing is, is kind of studying this like, uh, tantra, like feminine embodiment and using yeah. for the feminine aspect of ourselves, using movement to access a greater alignment. You know, that's fantastic. That's something that's so new to this show because, uh, you know, it's something that we haven't talked on this show, the dance expressions and everything, the feminine aspects to the dance. It's a wonderful way of healing yourself and 
I think we all get uplifted when we dance. It is something that motivates us and release of oxytocin hormones. It really helps in creating a great positive environment all around us. And I'm so sure that you also feel the very same. When yeah. I need to ask you something that's just my curiosity, mm -hmm. you have been the best-selling author of Healing Happens and Practice. Yeah. So how did this happen? And from mm -hmm. where did you get this uh, start, or I should say the kickstart of becoming an author? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you a couple things, and I'm going to tie dance into this as well, because that was a huge motivator to opening up that channel and that possibility. And, and not many people know this, but I remember I'd be going to personal development trainings, and they'd be like, how long have you wanted to write a book? You're like, raise your hand if a year, you know, five years, 10 years, 30 years. And I'm still raising my hand, and they're looking at me like, how old are you? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I told my mother when I was five years old that I was going to write a book. And I was going to write my autobiography, which is hilarious because it's, it's like, I didn't even know if I have anything interesting happening in my life that would be worth sharing in an autobiography. And I still have yet to write a full on autobiography, but you do get pieces of my story in both of my books that are out there and plenty of my blog posts. Um, but let me tell you this, and this is important for anyone to know who, who feels like you're not great at something, but you really want to do it because I was held back from my writing abilities in grade school. I had to have a oh. special tutor and I was, um, I excelled in math. So we had these equivalency exams in grade school and I would get 99% in math, which was the highest you could get. 55% oh, in English and grammar, 55%. Oh and then here I am as an adult, I'm living at a yoga community, I'm helping with the yoga teacher training, and I get hired on also to be the sales and marketing director for the book publishing company. Yeah. Um, and even there, they didn't want to let me write that much. Like I wanted to create a new, uh, you know, just advertisement book of all the, of all the books that we had. Um, we needed one because we had published new books, and they're like, no, no, like you don't have a journalism degree, like you can't do that. Yeah. And, and it just, there's a part of me that was like, well, you know, I'll just go get the training that I need then, you know, if, if I'm not good enough or qualified enough. But True. There, there were two things that happened because writing didn't come naturally either. It wasn't like there was this flow or this desire. But I, I had a friend that I was talking to like every night sharing all of these ideas that I had. And, and wow. it's just like, why am I just talking his head off instead of sharing <laughs> them for real? you know, more publicly. So there, there's that in there. I'm, I'm working around books and, and there's something that I want to share that's, you know, inside me. And obviously I had a desire in the back of my mind since I was a little kid or maybe some intuition that I was going to be an author. And I, um, when you live in the, in the yoga community, you know, you, in, in that context, like they really felt like you should give up everything that you are. And this is important yes. for anyone to try. You give up everything that you are, but whoever you truly are will come back to you. And yes. they even told me to start dancing again. And I'm, I'm living up in the mountains in California. It was probably three, four hours from San Francisco, you know, downtown San Francisco. And one of my old dance teachers was having a performance. And sometimes I just sort of act. I don't always read all the, the details about it. I just act on intuition. And I'm like, okay, I'll go to their performance. Um, yeah. You have to know also when you live in the yoga community, like what's, what's valued is sort of silence and stillness. And wow. I go to this performance. I drive all the way to the city, uh, which is also yeah. the secret thing. I didn't tell anyone I was doing that. Obviously, now the whole world knows. Yeah. Um, but but I drive all the way to the city, and and I, and I walk into the theater, and they're doing a funk version of Electric Slide. Electric Slide is like a, a dance that we all know the moves to. It's very yeah. simple. So we do it at every party, and um, the whole theme of this show was funk. So they created another version and they're in the lobby and they're like, do you want to do the, the funk electric slide with us? And of course me, the yeah. dancer who part of me loves to party, you know, just sitting meditating all the time. And I'm like, sure, like I'll do it. And, and yeah. so I do the funk electric slide and I'm sitting in the audience. And the first thing the MC comes out, he's like, okay, there's a requirement for everyone in the audience. 
You have to be as loud as possible for this performance. And of course, I'm sitting here like, well, that, that's bad. You know, they say in the yoga community, like, don't do that. But I'm like, I'm, I'm here in this environment. I'm going to be full out <laughs> that I'm doing. And I have the badge to be loud. I was nicknamed yeah. Big Mouth when I was little. Yeah, that's fantastic for someone to be in the environment and live it up for the moment because that's what's required when you are just giving up on yourself in mm -hmm. life. I think it's a transformation of your inner self. You have the potential to do much beyond. You can think consciously because your subconscious mind also states something that's often running in your mind and you can actually heal yourself while you are at it. My dear viewers who have joined us, there are many people who have commented. Arasu has said, fabulous and fantastic session. Great to see you both. Keep rocking. Yay. And there is Krishna who says, good conversation. There is Nilima Mahal saying, good evening, beautiful ladies. There Yay. is Arasu saying, very interesting, nice talk. So there's so many beautiful souls who have joined us tonight. And they're continuing to watch us because there is enormous happiness when I host people because mm. from across the globe I feel it is just a divine connect that brings me alive to host a show like this when I named it deep talks I really had a deep meaning people do not talk about their deep interesting experiences of life whether they are failures or success it's not to do with achievements as much as it is to do with the challenges the disasters they have faced in life and in mm -hmm. India, it is still a taboo. So to break the barriers, I brought this show and brought people around from across the globe to speak their heart out. And this is something that's fantastic, connecting to you through Gary, Bieta, Michelle, all of them. Mm -hmm. I, I could not even dream of connecting to so many people who know me in Denver. It feels fantastic. Suddenly you realize your name is being talked about and your show is being talked about and people yeah. want to come on the show so it, it is a great it's in, it, in itself a facilitator for me that mm -hmm. I should connect to more people and let others also know how their life has been mm -hmm. well Avatil you have yeah. over 15 years serving thousands worldwide as an award-winning mm -hmm. international keynote speaker yeah. so how did you get to becoming a keynote speaker Mm -hmm. Any experience of yours that brought you to a feeling that being a keynote speaker is in itself a great feeling and it gives you contentment to a level? And what was that best experience of yours while being a keynote speaker? Yeah, yeah. Wait, I, uh, you know, I said I, I was nicknamed Big Mouth as a kid, like probably when I was really, really little. And at some point, though, I became very shy and quiet. I was even sure. the kid who was teased in grade school. And, okay. and there I am, though, whenever I had to give presentations, I didn't have any issues getting up in front of them. And I never got nervous <laughs> about it. And I, I don't know, maybe people recognize that. But it was like I was constantly asked to teach, to present. And I loved it. Just, just wow. loved it. And when I started performing dance, they're like, who's this girl on stage? Like she was shy, and there she is, like all, all lit up. But it's like this, yeah. this opportunity to, to share so yeah. much more broadly, you know, than when you're just sitting quietly in a room to kind of open up the energy or talk about like, what do these conversations open up? Like everyone watching this, like what, what does this open up for you? That's even not directly related. You know, like when I was watching that dance show and it opened up the ability to write, like all of a sudden I became a writer from that. So I, I think ma mainly it was, it was just a natural form of inspiration. And what I love about being a keynote speaker is to ad adapt when I'm sharing to what's relevant for the, the people there and to focus more on inspiration for people. Wow. Um, and so it's not, you know, there's, they say there's speakers that like, like speak to sell, you know, and they want you to come into all their programs and all their yes. trainings. And I could do that. And I have lots of programs you all can come to. Um, but, but to just say this moment now is what's important. And I'm going to give you a gift right now that can make an impact on your life. Yes, that is uh, so important. And I have seen that you have happened to inspire people for absolute happiness and boundless energy. That's what you're working for. It's very important, Avatil, to give it back to the society where you're staying. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are materialistic. And I believe that a small help 
can help people live their life in a better way. There should be a quality living. And for mm-hmm. that, the milk of human kindness should be there. Feeling grateful for every act of yours can help people live better. And that's mm-hmm. what I feel. And that's what exactly you're doing to inspire people. Well, your story, my story is the same. I was a shy kid. There was a teacher who told me that you have to fight for your rights. You have to voice it out and you have to give group presentations. And I, since then, have been winning Best Orator Awards and Best Presentations. And look where I am, hosting people now on a show. So this is something that is a transformation, which happens when you are pricked and your ability is being seen by a third party. So Mm -hmm. sometimes when you're conducting this show, there are people who are listening. They might have a transformative attitude towards listening to the tips given by you or me. And that can help them in living a better life. In itself, it is a healing. So as a counselor, as a mental health expert, I conduct these shows to make people connected to the voice that we are. So Mm -hmm. if we can impact them, what better a stage it is to be here tonight with you. Your being a healing facilitator, Avatil, has touched my heart and mind more than anything else. Would you want to speak on what is it being a healing facilitator? Yeah, yeah. I actually just did a Facebook Live on the term healing. And I think a lot of people like to call themselves healers. Uh, But it's sort of like, you know, the the facilitators or like the, the channel I I was this you know program manager at Microsoft and then this yoga and fitness yeah. instructor teacher trainer I'm teaching all these classes I start having health issues and I start doing research and I heal beyond what the doctors explained as possible and I run into all these other stories yeah. of it happening for other people and and that's where like that this motivation comes from it's just what else can each of us unlock in our own selves, in any area of life, not just with our physical body, but in our relationships, with our finances, our businesses, our hobbies, and, 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 and heal, like, you know, whatever's holding us back from that, that next step, that opening, that next thing that we want to experience, you know, the next thing we want to let go of and not experience anymore. And, you know, so I've been trained in all these different healing modalities. I've kind of found that the neuro-linguistic programming is such a wonderful, accessible way to open ourselves up in every area of life. Um, and so that that's kind of, you know, where it is, you know, whether it's I, I smiled at you on the street and, and yeah. it, like, it was a moment of feeling better or you, you come to a talk and get this inspiration right, and raise vibration or you work one to one with me and get into a little more depth of, of what yeah. is going on for you. And there's results that, you know, you deserve and you want. How do you get there? We're going to get there. True. True. So your background is amazing because you've been doing a little different from what all others are. They're focused on one path. And I've seen that you have been a program manager at Microsoft, lead coach for Success Resources America, sales and marketing director for Crystal Clarity Publishers, and yoga and fitness trainer and director. This is so much to do in such a short span. So what made you a multi-talented soul that you are because this is something that's interesting Mm -hmm. like you know people live monotonous life and they get tired easily they get bored and maybe they are shrinking in their business but they don't know what to do they don't take the initiative to even ask for help so what was it that inspired you to carry forward diverse opportunities that were coming your way so was it just destiny that affected you and you were just going on from one profession to another or was it something more than that ah well one thing i want to say i mean yes i was probably born with a certain amount of motivation and energy but it, everything is a cyclical effect so that feeds into itself and really the the first thing that anyone can do is, is live it's, it's do yes. what you love, you know, and we talk about dance because dance is so fun. So it's like, start your dance. What is your dance, right? From my book, Healing Happens, like people I interviewed, like Dr. Bernie Siegel, like they said that the people who were healing from terminal cancers were the ones who were focusing on their reason to live. And the next thing you do is what's going to raise your vibration? 
it, sure. what what is going to unlock channels what's going to open your brain up what's going to remove what holds you back because when you expand your brain capacity you're able to do more and when you get rid of the emotions that block it you're also able to do more and that's where like the ability of tapping into different types of skill sets can come in and yes i mean a lot of things ha happened along the way and 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 fell into my path and maybe it's all this divine purpose that like comes together so perfectly to build into what i do because all of those pieces have have come together for sure that's wonderful and i've also seen that you have stages shows where she have sung and danced including KLTA Channel 7 News KPCW KCMG Miss South India Pageant and Global Workplace Wellness Summit and Motivational Millennial so would mm -hmm. you love to talk about the experiences that came along with Channel 7 News and Miss South India Pageant how did it happen and how did you feel uh, being there on this various uh, notes of channels which connected you to different people and yeah. how do you take this as an opportunity for socialization or more learning in your life yeah i think one thing too is is for people to watch what's naturally coming across their life what are they getting invited into what where are they happening to be this is how the myth south india pageant happens i'm two weeks before my trip to india N three months trip no idea what I'm going to do. I want to study some yoga. I'm a new yoga instructor. And all of a sudden, within those two weeks, I get all these connections and the, the trip is laid out. And I, I arrive in places and somebody picks me up. They take me in their home. They feed me. They clothe me. They, they tour me around. They put me up in a training program. And so I'm studying Ayurveda. And then I'm, I'm getting an, a sari sewn. I love wearing saris. <laughs> One of the most like, beautiful, elegant things you can wear. I know it's yes. like a lot of people are phasing out of that because it's challenging, but it's so beautiful. Yes. And and as so I'm going to a um uh what's it called I'm going to like a shopping mall to get my sari finished and I hear this music I'm like what's that what's that music like it's a dance studio so I'm like okay <laughs> I walk over and it's a dance company and they're yeah. they invited me to practice with them the next day like you know just come we'll see what happens and then at the end of that they said okay you're going to be the lead in this dance and you're performing with us, with us next week at the miss south india pageant I'm like okay so <laughs> <laughs> that was an am. opportunity that knocked on you like hey ever tell you supposed to participate and you're there just there taking yeah, it up and living it up i'm sure yeah. that you must have enjoyed it thoroughly yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you be open. You say yes. I toured with the company for a couple of months. It was great. <laughs> so wonderful. That, that's wonderful. Apart from that, I've also known you that you have articles published in Toastmasters International Magazine, Fitness Professional Online, 30 Second Sacred Dance Skill Journal. So while writing these articles, what was that uh, one thing that inspired you to write on one topic that was there in each of the various um, uh, publications where you have written your articles in like as a fitness professional I'm sure you must have written something about fitness mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. something about sacred dance guild journal still is making me feel curious to ask you a question so yeah. what was that article that you wrote in sacred dance guild journal would you love to share that experience with all of our viewers who have joined us tonight for the conversation Abdul? yeah you know I'd have to like remember exactly because I've written a lot of articles yeah. um but and i think i wrote a, like two or three for them uh but but one i want to say one thing there's a common thread amongst all of us which maybe is helpful to tie this down to and one of my mentors called me a one woman campaign against you'll never and i had wow. mentioned that i was held back in school for my writing abilities and then there i write a best-selling book with four awards in college i'm going to tell you this my ballet teacher pulled me aside and in my freshman year, in the middle of class, to tell me I would never amount to anything. And there I am oh performing God. Bollywood at the yeah. Miss South India pageant two weeks after I arrive in India. Sure. And really all of those stories in each of those magazines, you know, while it's a different thread, it's with dance, it's with fitness, it's with, uh, you know, my writing or my speaking abilities, right? Because I went through that whole phase that I was so shy, but here I am, like, you know, extroverted and yeah. part of all these people, and and just allowing again that that space to to go after what you want. So think about also other 
people more famous than me, Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, yeah. Lady, Lady Gaga, like Albert Einstein, they were all told at one point they did not have the the skills to to do sure. the the thing that they wanted to do. Thank goodness yes. for us they didn't listen. Yeah. True, so true. Even Winfrey Oprah is one of my idols. I just admire her for her way of interviewing people and the way she's lived her life out of all the opportunities she got later. Obviously, mm -hmm. she would want to do a lot more and she's doing great. And I'm quite inspired by her. Well, you have also won Exceptional Women of Excellence Award from Women Economic Forum. So uh, how did it feel when you were winning this Exceptional Women of Excellence Award? I'm sure it must have been an amazing moment. So what was that one moment when you came to India and you mm -hmm. related to yourself uh, saying that you have written something that has connected the feminine aspects as well as the healing and the fitness aspects to a point. So what was that that you had in mind when you were talking about Women Economic Forum and how did you get to win this Exceptional Women of Excellence Award, if I may yeah. ask you this? Yeah, well, someone nominated me. So I guess, you oh, know, wow. take, take any thread of, of, of what I've shared or being the one woman campaign against you'll never. And I feel like that was actually a strong topic at this convention. Because while in, in America, we have so much more option for women and, and, and we've already done so much work for equality of women, it's not like that everywhere in the world. And, and sure. some of the women, you know, without getting into all their stories, but they went through a lot more challenge to get yes. to that convention. And I know when I meet a woman, she's like the first business, you know, leader in, um, you know, in, in one of the countries in South America, let's say, like, like, I just, I know how much challenge that every one of these people go through. And you have these, these delegates from each country, really, who are getting different awards. They come from all over. We've all gone through our yes. struggles. You know, you've already heard some of mine. And, and it's just saying, I'm, I'm going to step forward. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take one step and then the next and the next. So yes. if you go, if you go hiking at any like, you know, famous park, like the Grand Canyon in US, and you'll see tons yes. of people looking over the edge of the Grand Canyon. And then sure. you'll see a lot of people hiking the first mile beyond the first mm -hmm. mile. Not as many people. And I went, I kept going. So every, everyone stops at the first campsite. I was by myself for the next two days. I kept back. Oh, and, and this is though where you find the success is if you just keep going, keep going. beyond yes. that first mile. You, you can't, yes. can't give up. You don't know how long things are going to take, what your tipping point is, what you need to learn along the process when the world is ready for you. Maybe you're like everything, right? You just have to wait for the right yeah. time. Yeah, that, that is so exciting and challenging in itself that you are challenging your own self every now and then. So instead of competing with other people around you, you're just trying to improve yourself uh, every single day. That's wonderful. It's fantastic to hear you speak about your own life experiences, Avatil. You've been trained as a neurolinguistic practitioner. So what made you stick to this concept of neurolinguistic practitioner and also an energy healer in chronic healing mm -hmm. and another level two healing? So this is something that is uh, quite nice and it's a motive behind this that I would love to know that why did you delve deep into energy healing and pranic healing and neuro-linguistic programming? Are they interrelated or do you take them as a separate process where you deal with it separately? Okay, there's multiple questions there. Um, so the first one is just how do how do we get into the energy healing and the neuro-linguistic practice? you know, yes. programming. And then the second phase is, is how are they connected? You know, or are they, you know, or are they separate? And, yes. you know, here I am healing beyond what's expected. And I just, I noticed the biggest difference in what was changing myself when I was using meditation and natural healing modalities, right? They nicknamed me like from medication to meditation. Um, and I thought, well, you know, that I can, I'm going to teach these people all the things that I did but can I also do something for them? And that's the energy yes. healing. I can yes. personally help people on a deeper level than just teaching you how to do it. Now, we all have to take personal action. We all have to decide to be open, to go in that direction. So I can't just do the energy healing with, without sort of the, the person being open for that. 
Um, yeah. And so that's the energy link. The neurolinguistic um, programming, like being a practitioner, that kind of showed up because I was involved in all of these personal and business development trainings. And the, while you're there, they're training you how to do this. And I start doing the neurolinguistic programming with people. And I think it's easier for people to see the shifts that they go through. It, it's more clear in the in the head um, yes. when we do the neurolinguistic programming. And it's also, I think sometimes people think the energy healing is a little more woo-woo, um, but neurolinguistic yes. <laughs> programming yeah. is a little less yeah. woo-woo. So it seems more approachable. Um, I do get messages often when I'm doing energy healing, which sort of give people like a, a clear thing to grasp on as well. Like you might get from the neurolinguistic sure. programming. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the results can be very similar. Yeah, that, that is something that's so relevant. So you have taught dance and performed the same internationally since 1993 as well. That's fantastic, Avital, because to know somebody who's having a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering, a major in dance, uh, you're known for your cutting edge wisdom with authenticity, delightful energy and infectious joy. That's mm -hmm. wonderful because we are knowing a different personality today who has ventured into different arenas and is still with us on this show. It, it seems so nice because you're so vibrant, full of energy around you and a great aura around you, which is, I'm sure, affecting all of the viewers who are watching us and they would love to share this sooner. And the ones who will be watching us later would love to even hear this conversation because this is something terrific. Your book, Healing Happens, has won four awards, including one from Top Shelf. Do you have something to say? Were you expecting this win? I mean, were you expecting that you will be getting four awards, uh, one from Top Shelf and the other three from other other places? I mean, was it your dream to win the four awards ever in your life? Like you said, that there were people who were trying to say that, no, you cannot write. But now those people must be standing and reading your book somewhere and having a delight in knowing that, yes, they know you. So I'm so sure that the smile on your face uh, reveals that you're very contented that you've won these four awards. But what was the feeling and did you dream about this award as you say that you have intuition? So did you have an intuition that you're going to be there with these awards? Were you actually visualizing all these and manifesting it into your life because you are a great energy healer yourself? Sometimes you just go for something without thinking about it. So I don't, I, I've done visualization a lot and that really helps, but sometimes what you also need to, to do is the, is not the anti-visualization. So there's plenty of times where I've been successful because I just do it. I don't think like, am, am I going to be good at this or not? I, I feel the inspiration. I go for it. That's it. Did I ever imagine that I would win four awards? No. You know, cause I knew that I had trouble. True with reading and writing. I, I'm still a slower reader. I, you know, it's still it's writing. Sometimes it, 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 it flows, you know, I get ideas, so it goes faster, but like the editing process is still slower for me. You know, I'm so thankful to have a great editor. Um, you know, this is the little piece to remind you it's, you know, you could say that my book got the award, but how many people contributed to that? And so remember yes. that you're not alone. You have people who could coach you, people who could train you, people who can help on your team to actually manifest things, people who can review what you're doing and make sure that it is the best that it it, it can be. Yes. Yes. So to, to say that there is a team that works together to have that result, which you have got. So that award is actually the reward of all those people who have contributed in making this book healing happens a great success. And I'm so sure that I'm going to grab a copy of it as soon as I finish the show. So uh, on this show, I always share a quote, which says that read between the expressions as they can illuminate your true self and a deep tip that says healing and dancing can be a great tool to release pent up energies. Mm -hmm. So do you really believe that there is a lot um, where people resist to share those feelings that now are breaking stereotypes and myths across the globe. There are people who feel that talking on bold topics is a no-no. So do you believe these kind of shows can really help people in connecting and for good? You know, what I want to say about, about you know, at least with the dancing and, and its contribution to healing is um, we 
a lot of what happens in the mind, we get into ideas and, and that's what can block us. That's what can create distance. Yes. When you dance with somebody and you're not thinking and you see your, your energies harmonize, or when you just dance by yourself and you don't have yes. to mentally understand, but you just feel what is flowing yes. and what is moving and you allow it to move instead of being stuck, you feel better. And, and the key is just do, do like, like what feels right to you, you know, so dancing, you know, something like, like, no, that's taboo. Like take a walk, you know, do your fitness, sure. you just can't dance in public. Like that's taboo dance by yourself. Um, dancing sure. is not necessarily for everyone, but in, in, in analogy, we all dance through life and how are yes. we going to flow that as smoothly as we can? Yeah, that, that is so wonderful because it is just to go with the flow. Dancing is a beautiful form of taking the expressions into different ways. And then you really know that you are a different self altogether because until you practice, you cannot be perfect. And we should not fall for the perfectionism as much. What do you have to say about uh, women empowerment, Avital? I would love to know. Before I leave this conversation open for people later on to comment, I would love to know from you. What do you think of women empowerment? I think men need to catch up. Um, I'm I'm joking a little, but it's I see more that's, that's and more okay. women out there like like doing things. I hear more and more about how women are going to be leaders. But here's the thing, and it, and this is you know, and men can do this too. You know, the, the sort of the power and the clarity that men have is so important. Um, there there is a skill that a lot of women have have you know, tended to hone into more, yes. um, right, that the men who haven't can pay attention to, which is right now, because we're in a world where the whole, in a life where the whole world is at our fingertips. That means you have True. to compete with the entire world. It's True. not just you're the one person in town who has the service, so everyone comes to you. So True. what a lot of people are going to do is they're going to pick who they're going to work with by the relationships that are developed. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. and that's just a huge thing for women to, to keep doing, keep use that power, you know, for men who aren't doing that to kind of take that as a tip and, and learn to do that. Um, I think we spent a bit of time where for women to feel empowered, they acted, you know, like men. And that's appropriate yes. for some women and not for others. And so it's sure. important for women to tap into our power yeah, in, in as feminine a way as we are feminine. And we all have the range. We all have masculine and feminine in us. So understand that however you are, whether it's light, soft, tiny, that has its power too. Whether it's sure. big, loud, you know, sharp, sure. that has its power. And so That's fantastically you know, stated by you that even a tiny thing has power. That speaks volumes when you say that, mm -hmm. Avatar, because that is something that holds relevance with something that is there to communicate for others to listen and break the barriers for a free talk and conversation like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy and glad that you are here tonight and you've shared your experiences. But before leaving this beautiful conversation, uh, though I don't want to end this conversation because you're seeming fantastic wrapped up with full energy on this conversation. But still, I would love to know those five tips to be a good leader and the five tips that you can give to those people who are suffering from depression and would love to come out of it. From your own life experiences, uh, you can share your enlightening experiences mm -hmm. and facts and tips for the people who are suffering depression and tips to become great leaders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I mentioned a couple of these. I'm going to throw this in there. And these are also what I call the full bodied success mastery. Yes. But when you listen, you have to move with me. Yes. Uh, so number one is focus on your reason to live. So you're going to put your hands on your heart and reach your arms forward and open. Reason to yes. live. Reason to live. Reason. And that is just, just a little piece of whatever you can do of doing something that you love doing. You know, Get creative if you need to to figure out what you can do and do it sure and number two don't listen to everything so you just you put one end on your hip you put the other end forward there is the camera there's the camera don't listen to everything sure um that's what i'm saying oprah winfrey steven spielberg all these people they kept going they didn't listen you know i did the same thing i didn't listen to where the doubts were you follow your passion when your passion is strong enough 
it will not block you. Shoo. Okay, roll your hands around and then shake your head yes, nod your head yes. Do what you can do. Yeah. Do what That's you can do. Do what's yeah. right for you to be doing. Trust that that will affect the other things that maybe you feel like you can't do. That'll build the energy. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's just wonderful. A lot of times we think that health issues are bad. They're a sign that we're doing something wrong, that something's going on. Depression, same thing. Yes. Depression is also a sign that you are letting go of something that is no longer you. And while it's still there, it feels depressing because this thing, it's not a match to who you are. True. And you could maybe say, well, is there a gift here? You know, even when it, it doesn't seem like this is going to lead in a good direction, but just what are the gifts? And what I like to do is have you raise your arms above you and, and like sing it to the heavens. What is the gift? What is yeah. the gift? People have changed their lives because of health issues that come up to the better. They move cities. They get out of relationships that don't serve them. They change jobs. The, the way that they healed gave them an entire new career, which serves many other people. You can read all those stories in my book, Healing Happens. True. And, and then I, I will let people know that they can grab a copy of it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll give you a, a fifth bonus because you asked for five. Yes. What I'm going to say is, and I mentioned this before, but raise your vibration. And we're going to make this. These are called jazz hands in, in dance. So you're just going to raise your hands up and raise your vibration. And you're all going to find different ways to do that. So right, some of you is going to be dance. Um, Lena has been mentioning this. Meditation, yes. I feel, is like a, a huge one. A huge one. And I would love to offer people a gift if that's okay. Yes, why not? Absolutely. Okay, so if people just go to free gift from Avital, Avital yes. is spelled A V for victory, I T for talented, A L. Then you're you're welcome to sign up for a month for my meditation group, um, where I'm I'm taking in all these concepts of the daily life challenges that we have. Of how do we have the courage to step out in a new way? How do we help heal ourselves? How do we lose weight? You know, how do we overcome fear? Yes. Um, and you can get a meditation for any one of those. We do live and there's over a hundred recordings. Wonderful. So I'm so sure the Indian audience and the ones who are listening, they will be joining Avatar for this wonderful program of hers where she's offering a gift tonight to all those who are watching this and the ones who will be watching us later. So feel that you are connected to us because the moment you ask for help is the time you get a gift. And this is what she had to offer tonight with us. It was wonderful, Avatar, to have you on Deep Talks. And I believe that we would stay connected and we would work in the future together. Maybe we have you again on this show sharing something that's even more enlightening enough. So one last tip while leaving that you would love to give to the host and the viewers watching the show. Hmm. Okay, I say what comes to my head. So just take that moment wow. to breathe. You do one breath and you do the next breath, but know that in every inhale, you're taking in new life and new energy. In every exhale, you're releasing what no longer serves you. So imagine that yeah. in every single moment of life, you can start over. With every breath, you can start over. That's wonderful. And my dear viewers, stay connected because we would be bringing someone special next time and we will let you know with the updates and the information. This was Gurleen hosting Abdul Miller. Please share, like, comment and stay connected. But do not forget that during your challenges, we are all together in the same. If you need help, we are there to offer help. Do not forget that your perfect mindset is only a step away. You have to take the initiative to live your life and do not waste even a single moment thinking too much. Just, just feel free to write an email to me, goodlinecoker at gmail.com or just dial in this number 0172259072. I would be there serving you, your needs and whatever you would feel to share with me. Thanks a lot, my dear viewers, for joining us tonight on Deep Talks Virtual Reality on Love and Life. Thanks, Avatar. Thank you so much for giving your precious time. Uh, it's a wonderful honor. 
probably it will be good to see you in America or whenever you come to India, do drop in a message and I would love to connect with you. Thank